Welcome back to the channel. It's Latuna Buzz Lightbeer, and I'm about 45 hours into Ark Survival Ascended and beginning to experience some of those legacy issues, which I will touch on in this one, along with a full lineup of Ark goodies. I've tried to bring you a wide range of topics like ASA on Xbox Game Pass, current Nitrado issues, Ark Survival Ascended, how is it being received and potential sales numbers, including some of those all-important profits. Hackers are back in ASA, apparently in force. And then we've got some community feedback to review. Every time I upload ARC to the channel, you ladies and gentlemen consistently show it love, and I wanted to say thanks. In case you haven't done so already, make sure to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are greatly appreciated. Chapters are in place and available for an easy viewing experience. And away we go. Kicking this one off is the hot topic of Ark Survival Ascended and will it be coming to Xbox Game Pass Day 1. Now to be clear, we have no definitive statement from Wildcard, Snail, or Xbox. So this is all going to boil down to just sheer speculation. But with only four days to go until the release of the game onto Xbox, the topic is definitely swirling around the Ark community. Wildcard was releasing patches and announcements with consistency when Ark Survival Ascended launched back on October the 26th, but as of late, the communication has slowed to a trickle. And just looking it over, but was it really October the 26th that Ascended launched onto Steam? I mean, it feels like months ago. Who knows? Maybe that's just me, but whew, time has flown. Anyways, back to that Game Pass question, and we know that in the past, for Survival Evolved, Microsoft paid $2.5 million to get the game on their popular subscription service, while Sony paid $3.5 million as well for PlayStation Plus users. This was discovered in a Snail Games SEC filing from September 2022, so well after the game was initially offered up for sale on consoles. One would assume that those payouts would be significantly higher for access to Arc Ascended on day one for both subscription services, possibly a fee that would just be too high for either to attempt. It is also public knowledge that Arc 2 will be an Xbox exclusive, whenever that materializes, which may lead to some quote-unquote bad blood between the likes of Sony and Snail. Again, that's just speculation on my part. But in the end, it's all going to come down to dollars, and how the game is currently selling on Steam may give us some clues as to what's to come. More on that in a moment. But if I were a betting man, I would guess that Ark Survival Ascended won't be coming to Xbox Game Pass day one. I'm not saying that's set in stone. That's just me reading tea leaves here, looking at current sales, how well Ark Survival Evolved is still maintaining player counts according to Steam numbers, kind of all of it mixed together. But who knows? We may get some info in tonight's Community Crunch, though I'm not betting on that either. Let me know where you stand on all of this. Sound off in the comment section below. And while we're on the topic of ASE versus ASA, sales numbers, profits, and of course, throw into the mix snail games, there's actually a lot to unpack here. First off is the surprising staying power of Ark Survival Evolved versus its newer upscaled relative. Now this could be chalked up to one of a million reasons. No crossplay at launch, only the island map, poor PC launch performance and huge hardware requirements, etc, etc. But the fact remains that ASE is still strong and maintaining equal player counts to the latest Ark experience. Now, besides that large initial surge of ASA players from 12 days ago, nearly hitting 100,000 concurrent players, it is largely stabilized, bringing us to sales projections. ASA saw some big early sales numbers, placing it at the top spot on Steam's sales charts and has now dropped out of the top 10, falling down to 11th place. Since Snail or Wildcard have not released the PC sales numbers or player counts, which by the way I find odd because if the game was truly breaking records those would instantly hit Twitter and social media, and besides Snail initially touting ASA as the number one top seller on Steam, which it was for a short while, they've really done nothing else to distribute those sales numbers. Now, Steam DB has all sorts of different sales projections, ranging from 223,000 up to 1.15 million copies sold. 
Now, a game with 55,000 concurrent players and a peak just under 100,000 is not a game that has sold 1 million plus copies. So let's take the play tracker owner estimates of roughly 223,000 copies and here's where I'm going to answer several questions that I've received about units sold, profits, and snail games. The game was selling for $40 at launch up until recently, so let's just go with that price. 40 bucks times 223,000 copies equals $8,920,000. But remember that Steam takes a 30% cut straight off the top for their services, so minus 2,676,000, leaving roughly 6.24 million for Snail and Wildcard. But wait, because according to their loan agreement with Nitrado, where Snail received that $4 million short-term loan, giving Nitrado all server hosting rights to ARC, if the game released by October 31st on PC, Snail agreed to repay Nitrado 20% a month from their ascended profits until the loan was repaid in full. 20% taken off of that $6.24 million is another $1.25 million gone, so Snail is down to $4.99 million in profits. From there, they've of course got to pay for all their accounts payables, lights, salaries, she highs, next failed venture, and there's not as much left over as you would think. Last time I looked it over, according to Snail Games' last SEC filing, they were in excess of $10 million in debt. So this first offering of Ascended on Steam has done little to get them out of the red. On to Nitrado, ARC's exclusive server providers, which in itself hurts to say in a video. And searching over Nitrado's website, they are currently holding the server slots and costs per rental at the lowered amounts, which were adjusted only after all of that server hosting scandal. And by the way, if you don't know what happened with all of that, link to Netty the Noodles video outlining that one can be found in the video description. Anyways, they're still displaying the ARC Extra Life graphics and the write-up is exactly as I saw it last Friday night. They've just added an amendment stating that Studio Wildcard has postponed the event until December the 2nd. But one thing I did want to shine a spotlight on is the ongoing issue of modded maps and Nitrado, and currently this is not looking good. I've been following Nikotis' attempts to get an answer from Nitrado for his Svartalheim modded map, and by the way, thanks for the response over on Twitter, but the news here is not looking good. Currently, Nitrado does not support modded maps for Ark Survival Ascended, which is an absolute tragedy, Questions are just met with silence, and through what little I can find on this subject, there's basically no information here, which is a damn shame, as I wanted to dive into this Dwarven-inspired map on Ascended. If anything new is discovered, or I see something from the Kadas, I will post in a subsequent ARC upload. Fingers crossed on this one. Moving on, and in a recent Venture Beat interview with Douglas Kennedy, co-founder of Studio Wildcard, he was quoted as saying that the entire code base of ARC has been rewritten and the artwork has been meticulously created to harness the full potential of Unreal Engine 5. But as players have been diving into ASA, it is clear that legacy issues persist, including meshing, as I've echoed a report from HOD Gaming. But now, the hackers are already lighting it up, as evidenced by Bam with his recent Twitter post. Speed hacks, no fall damage, ESP, you name it, it's all here on full display. We were repeatedly told that ASA would have enhanced anti-cheat, but clearly those hacks have gone right around that one. These need to be identified and fixed immediately, and offending players should have their gaming IPs nuked so they can never again log a single second into ARC. And finally, looping back around to that broader discussion of ASA versus ASE player counts, and included in this discussion should be the mixed reviews that ASA is receiving on Steam. Currently, 56% of the 24,000 plus reviews are positive. And actually reading over some of these, it looks like the positive review bomb campaign has begun to try to improve the ASA review scores. I mean, I swear this looks like chat GPT is involved, but actually some of these are kind of interesting. Arc Crash Evolved. And yes, I'm still seeing crashes. They aren't as frequent as when the game first launched, but they are severe, locking up my entire PC and requiring a dashboard kill to get the damn game closed down. But the comments that I find truly interesting are those that are aimed at coping with Arc, like 
best worst game ever. Absolutely broken, nothing new, we'll be spending 5,000 hours on it, and I still hate this game, but at least it's pretty now. I'd be interested to see where you land on Ark Ascended. Are you feeling like one of those review comments, which, by the way, all received an upvote positive review rating? Sound off about anything Ark related in the comments section below. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are greatly appreciated. All my socials can be found in the video description below. Shout out to the nearly 180,000 of you that have stuck with me and hit subscribe. And a special thanks goes out to my Patreon supporters and to those of you sending over those much appreciated YouTube Super Chats. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.